Hello, everyone. I'm Reza Arteslamay. I will present my colleagues, Nicolas Miliaras and Olga Princeva and Jionglu. Uh, the goal was to identify new terminology for uh, particular for chemical substances in mesh to um, help with the uh, development of the mesh ontology. And uh, we developed this framework with our machine learning tools uh, which I would like to talk to you about today. So at the National Library of Medicine, um, a large body of work that has been going on for several decades now is the indexing of articles. And this is done in order to facilitate retrieval for these articles later on when, we, when people query for these articles. And indexing is done by assigning medical subject heading terms, uh, and MESH is this controlled vocabulary of terms that is being updated every six months or so. The MeSH tree consists of 16 uh, main branches, and these are organized conceptually. We have anatomy terms, organisms, diseases, chemicals, um, and so on. Of course, each of these branches have their own sub-branches. They are organized conceptually and in a hierarchical manner. So what happens, um, so indexing focuses on identifying things that are the focus of the article, that are important to retrieve this article later on, this important information that we have to record. And sometimes, as it's uh, just focus on the highlighted term right there, is a new chemical term that is not part of the vocabulary. So what happens, there is a process at the National Library of Medicine, the indexers, identify these terms and then they flag them. If a term happens to be in more than two articles, that means this is important, it has to be part of the vocabulary and uh, they will include that and they will find where in the hierarchy of the MeSH organization this term has to go on and, and it gets added. Last year in 2022, of, of course we all know all the challenges of having to do curation for all the articles that come, all the influx of articles. So they, they need support. We have less human resources trying to do this, this, this work and a lot more articles that we need to get the work done in. 62% um, of all the vocabulary requests last year was on chemicals and chemical subgroup or new synonyms for existing concepts. This is where we came in. And the uh, framework that I'm going to describe actually combines three different tools that we develop for different purposes, but we combine these in a, in, in a framework that feeds to each other so that we can uh, help find, help curators find the relevant articles. And in this case, the relevant articles are those that contain new terminology, specifically chemical terminology. Uh, NLM Chem is our um, tool that identifies chemicals and uh, tries to identify a mesh terms for each, for each of the chemicals. And TeamTet is our annotation tool that helps the curators. So what, what this Lit Suggest does? The goal of Lit Suggest is that you have, you start with your own set of articles. In this case, what we started with was that uh, curators gave us a set of 200 articles and said, these are the articles that all of these contain new chemical terms. We do not have these terms in our mesh ontology. W using Let's Suggest, we built a training model. It's, uh, it's a BERT model. It's a, a highly effective neuro, um, a BART model, we classified them, and then we fed all the new articles that had been published from the, uh, from the start of, year, of the year until at that date when we were working mm -hmm. on, and we told, told Liz Suggest to classify and gave us the articles that were most likely to be similar to the training data set that we started with. I don't expect you to read this whole slide, but this is an explanation of what NLM Chem does. <laughs> NLM Chem is um, a, a, a highly uh, precise chemical identification tool that reads 
um, titles and abstracts and full text of the uh, so PubMed and PubMed Central or other uh, med biomedical texts and will identify the chemical terminology in there. Um, it, it combines a lot of multiple term, uh, terminology candidates and tries to find the best match. We are here trying to find the match and it's to mesh and of course, we are trying to look for new chemicals, so most likely we'll not find the, uh, the, combina the exact normalization to match, but we will still use the result of what the tool thinks is gonna be a new chemical and we're gonna, we're gonna use it in combination with this other tool, which is TeamTAD, and this helps annotation. In fact, this one is capable of doing collaborative annotation. I believe there was a question from the audience in the earlier question about that. Um, it, multiple curators can work on the same article. What is showing in this um, screenshot, in, in blue, the new chemical terms have been highlighted. And our curators are capable of adding little notes and matching them to some other terminology. They can say this is a new chemical group, they can say this is a new chemical substance, they can say this is a new synonym for one of the uh, occurring uh, things that we have in the terminology and you have some mesh terms here, you can see in the, in the table on the right. It, it helps the curation be more efficient and it helps them save time. So here's how we combine everything in, in, a, in a loop here because we repeated this process about five times um, last year because as we get new articles from TeamTet, now we know these are new articles that have new terminology, we will update the training data on let's suggest and we will retrain, we will get that model a little bit more precise, we will run them again on the, on the new articles and we will we'll get some more candidates, which again will go to curators and we did that uh, with, 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 with great success. It is time efficient, we estimated that once we integrate this into their, in, in, into their uh, curation work, uh, it, it comes to about 300 articles per month, so they know exactly what to expect. Lead suggests helps concentrate curator time to the highly relevant articles of this purpose, but this can be adapted because the framework is general, can be adapted for new genes, for other terminal, for new diseases. Uh, it allows curators to efficiently mark the new substances, synonyms, and or chemical groups, or any other. So for genes, it will be new genes, or other for disease, for new terminology. And the extracted report provides 16 details for the MeSH vocabulary development. Uh, I would like to recognize the biocurators that work specifically with this project. Of course, this was supported by the Intramural Research Program of the National Library of Medicine. Finally, I would like to leave you with this slide. We are organizing the BioCreative 8th Challenge Workshop, which will uh, be in conjunction with EMEA Annual Symposium in November. And uh, we are organizing four tracks, which might be of interest to this community. I would be happy to talk more if you have any questions about those as well. Hi, for, for, very nice talk. Um, I was curious in your workflow, for me the first thing you'd want to do is actually fire the synonyms against PubChem and see what was in there and wasn't. So I'm wondering what your synchronization uh, system uh, pipeline is with PubChem and the other thing is wouldn't it be, yeah, suppose Mesh were to submit as a substance ID, the PubMed new chemistry link, then you'd all automatically be be adding to the uh, the PubChem uh, the PubChem PubMed mapping space and the synonyms. We work very closely with PubChem. In fact, in the notes that the curators add to TeamTAT, they will if if they find it in PubChem, they will find they will add the PubChem ID. If they find it in uh, some other data in Cabby, they will add a Cabby ID. So if they find it somewhere else, they will document it, which it is, yes. Hi, um, Colby again. Hello. Uh, sorry to be bugging you again. 
But uh, it's been long documented in MeSH and the early work on MeSH. Uh, those guys did recognize that there was problems with uh, homonymy in the vocabulary. So same term used for different meanings. Um, this was a significant problem and they weren't sure how to solve it. But uh, I'm curious as to how these new methods are resolving the issue. And then second, I do have a possible Solution, not really a solution, just like maybe an, a question about maybe it can help uh, assist in this because um, co-word pairs can be more, more informative. So maybe mesh incorporating co-word pair matching might be something that you can incorporate into an electronic or automatic uh, process to help solve that issue. Okay, um, I'm a text mining person. <laughs> you, I will be happy to pass along your question and uh, you ca we can exchange contact information. I will be happy to find the person that is the right one to answer your concern. Hi. So, so my question is, is more along the, the boundary of mesh and, and how it relates to other things in the community. So I, I love using mesh. It's a really wonderful resource. But I'm, I'm frustrated every time I use it because of the boundaries between mesh and the other things. For example, we have the disease ontology curators, the Kiwi curators, and all of these other resources that are are you know, redundant in certain ways. And Mesh, uh, it, it has a very hard time mapping out to these things and organizing this kind of information, making it possible for us to take resources where people have used Mesh identifiers, combine them with resources that use other identifiers. Uh, and, and so there's a big gap here that needs to be filled. Uh, and my question is, how do, we, how do we enable Mesh to better interact with this community? What can the community do to integrate you and to, to motivate you to become part of this? I, I understand your concern, and I think I, I'm going to give you my um, my comment on it. I think it it goes back to 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 history, like why did Mesh come along, and what is Mesh's purpose? Mesh is a is a is a, class, is a classification is a shelving uh, system for the library, like every. Um, publication, medical publication that comes to the library, they need to find, you know, the proper shelf. And MeSH is the tag that goes, like, it gives you that, I, this article speaks about this disease, this disease at this gene, and it's talking about uh, treatment. It, it, it will give you those tags that will give you a conceptual uh, definition for concise description of what this article is. And traditionally, doctors would come with these queries, like I am working in this field and I want information for this field. So it's, it was a very conceptual search system. Um, when we, so our work is to, to make this process more efficient right now, because humans are unable to handle that. When it comes to ontology mapping, I think we, it, this challenge needs to be recognized for what purpose this ontology was built, or vocabulary, and how that relates, or which parts of this vocabulary match perfectly, and which parts of it need a little bit grain of salt when we, when we go about it. Session. If other people have questions, you can ask us a great source. Another round of applause.